Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Mo ICT. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to make a app that plays multiple sound files together in Windows Form. Uh, if you played around with Windows Form before, you'll notice that it's not possible to play two different sounds at the same time using the Sound Player class, but we found a way around it by using the Media Player. Right, uh, so let's just take a look how this app works. So right now I've got three buttons on the screen here. Uh, these two buttons here will play a sound file using the sound player class. And this one here will play the sound using the media player class. So the problem here is if you're uh, creating a game and you want to play background music alongside with another sound effect on top, which is quite standard, uh, the problem that you'll face is you can't play two sound files together using the sound player class. So let's try this one first. So if I play the music here, you can hear the background music playing right now. But if I play the laser sound, it will turn off the first one and it will play the laser sound. That's because the sound player class uses one channel to actually play both of the sounds. So it needs to turn off one before it can play the other one. However, if we use the media player class, so if I play the background music playing the media player, okay, as you can see, you can hear the background sound. And then if I play the laser, the background sound is still playing in the background. So let's try and uh, make this project in Visual Studio. So let's go and create a new project. Okay, so in this screen here, click on create new project. We're going to be picking the Windows Form app.net framework. Click next. Call this one to play multiple sounds, no ICT, and then click create. Okay, so to get started on this project, first we need to download the sound files from the Moore ICT website. So the sound files are here. Okay, so these are the sound files that we need. So right now we have got three. Uh, so the sound player class can only play WAV files, but the media player class, uh, media player component actually can play MP3 as well. But you notice the size difference between them. So these two files play exactly the same music, but this one here is 89 kilobytes. And then the WAV file is 669 kilobytes. So it's substantially bigger than the MP3 one. That's because of the MP3 algorithm actually compresses things a lot better uh, while keeping the quality. But the WAV file is sort of like a raw file. So, you know, it allows you to um, play it from a very basic level in Windows form. But at the same time, you sacrifice a little bit with the um, size of the file. Uh, this one here is a laser sound file. So that's the WAV as well. Right, and uh, so we're going to import all these three files into the project. So uh, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to highlight all of them and copy. If you go to the project, go to Solutions Explorer, right click on the name of the project, go to this option here, open folder in File Explorer. So that will open the folder. And then if we go to bin, debug, and then I'm just going to paste these three files here. So at the moment, I notice that the folder is empty because the project hasn't been built yet. So when the project is built, it will add all the necessary files for it to run. And we'll come back to this folder in a minute. Okay, so to begin with the form, let's go and change the text, the title of the form to multiple sound files in C sharp, more ICT. Okay, so that's the title. Uh, we'll add a label to this app. So this is going to be sort of like the header of the app. Let's say look at that with C sharp, and then we'll change the font of the label to bold and twenty six. That way it's bigger, and you can sort of tell what it is and what it's doing. Okay. So make sure you save your project as frequently as possible. So we're going to need three buttons, but I'm going to start with one first. Let's just make this one slightly bigger. Just move that over here. And then I'm going to change the text of this button here to say and play laser sound. Okay, so that's going to play the laser sound. I'm going to set the name of this one to BTN laser sound so that way we know what this button does and you can also go to the events window here so if you from the properties you can click on the events window and then from in the click let's say play laser sound okay and that's going to add the event to the c sharp script okay i'm just going to copy and paste this button again so i'm going to add this one here and this one's going to be playing the background sound using the sound player. So we're just going to say that here. Okay. 
background music. Soundplayer. And the reason we made the button bigger is so you can read the text properly inside of it. Okay, so that's a play background music, the sound player, the properties. Let's change the name of this one to Just say background sound and then go to events. Click on the click event and then just say play background sound player. Okay, so we know this one is going to play the sound player from here and go back to the design view again. I'm going to copy and paste this button in this one. I'm going to be basically changing it to say BTN play media player. Okay. And then for the text of this one, I'm going to change the end a bit to say instead of sound player, you should just say media play on here. So that way, play background music, media player, play background music, sound player, and then just play laser sound. Okay, and then that's that. We'll go to the events, inside the click one, just say play media player. Okay, click OK. So in order for us to use the media player, we need to import it from the toolbox. So by default, Visual Studio does not have the media player enabled, but I've imported it before. So what I can do now is I can show you how to import it again. Okay, so if you just right click on your uh, toolbox here, just go to choose items. Okay, so the media player is inside the com components. So if I click on that one, right, and the media player is all the way in the bottom here. Okay, so if I just disable that for now and click OK, that will take my media player out and then I can re import it again. So I go to choose items, com components, okay, scroll down to media player, Windows media player there, click OK, uh, tick that box and then click OK. All right, and right after that, you'll see a media player appear inside the toolbox. So if I just drag and drop the media player here, Okay, that's been added. I'm just going to make it slightly bigger. So as you can see, you already have the media player control, the volume, skip, stop, play, and the um, track bar here as well. So right now, all we need to do is just add a um, existing media player here, whether it can be music or video file, and it should just load it up. So what we need to do now is just going to go and change the name of this one from AX Windows Media Player 1 to, let's call it MXB. So if I just press start now, so all these um, events for these buttons are empty, so they're not going to do anything. However, you'll see that the media player controls are still workable. So I can mute it. I can put the volume up and down. The track bar is highlighting as well. I can move it up and down, but because nothing's loaded, it's not playing anything. So what we'll do now is we'll get started on the C Sharp script. So let's go back to the script here. So to begin, uh, what we need to do is we need to import the using system media uh, namespace. So the reason we're importing this one is because we're going to be using the sound player class and that's inside of this namespace. So uh, right before the public form one, we're going to add the three global variables here. So these three are, first one is for the background music. So that's the sound player class. It's an instance of the sound player. Another instance of the sound player is the laser sound. And then we need a Boolean because what we don't, what we want to do is when the background is playing, we don't want the media player and the sound player both to play together. So the Boolean is going to help us determine which one is playing first and then just turn off the other one if uh, one of them is playing. Okay, so with these three done, uh, we're going to set up the media player default settings inside the form one constructor. So if we can make some space inside of this one. So this constructor here runs first. So initialize component is going to load up all the components by default for the app. Anything that we have added to the design, anything that we change and stuff like that. So all of this is going to be initialized here. And then right under, what we want to do is we want to re um, set up the media player. So the MXP that we used here. So um, this MP3 is going to be linked to the media player. So right now it's going to go through the MXP URL equals to make sure you use the at sign. So that's going to uh, determine whether to find that file at this location. Right. And then inside the quotation mark, put, make sure we put the file name exactly as it is. OK. So if you look at the debug um, folder again. So as you notice now, uh, since we run the application, it has added a few more um, files to it. So these are the three files that we added before. So the web file, the MP3 file, and the laser sound web file as well. But you also see this DLL files here. So these two are very important because we need them to, to work with the media player, right? 
and then these three files are the setup for the actual application itself so this here is going to run the application independently without the um, visual studio running right so as you can see the media player is working here the buttons and everything is showing up but without these two dll files the media player is not going to work so just make sure that if you are distributing the app later on if you want to share it with somebody or you know submit the assignment or so, so on so make sure you put in everything that is inside of this folder and then share it so you can zip it and then upload it whatever you need to upload it or you know send it to somebody and then right after that what we need to do is a background sound is usually repeated so background sound loops through so um, the media player doesn't have a repeat forever option but we can work around it using the settings play count then equals to i'll put it in all 999 and then this will basically run it this many times so you can set this number to anything that you want Okay. and then right after that we by default we're going to stop the media player from playing so that we don't want it to start playing straight away and then the last line here is basically setting the media player to invisible when the um, program loads so if i set that one back to true for now click start as you can see the media player is still here but now the play button is active so if i press play it's playing the background sound that's because the background sound is loaded from here through the url and if it finishes it will go back to the beginning and then start playing again okay you can still mute it you can put the volume up and down okay and you can stop it and play it again so if i set that one to false now that will make the media player invisible however it's still accessible through the code okay so let's add the laser sound bit so right here so here we are linking the laser sound with the sound player and we're passing in the laser sound WAV file inside of the sound player. So that's going to load up the laser sound file and then it's just going to play it every time the button is pressed. Okay, if I click start on this one. Okay, so now for the play background sound player. So inside of this event, the background music, once again, is similar to the laser sound one. We are linking it to the sound file here. But instead of play, we're saying play looping. So in this case, whenever the uh, track finishes, it will restart again. And also when this button is pressed, we want to stop the media player. So if it is playing at that time, we want to stop it. And we also want to set, um, set BG playing, the Boolean. So the background playing boolean to true so let's try that out i click on start if i click on background player here so you can hear the background sound playing right now but this is being played through the sound player class okay so it's being played through here now when it finishes as you can see that it actually restarts again but the problem starts is when you have two of these playing right now although it says play looping if i play it and then as soon as i click on the laser sound one it kind of stops the sound player although the part of two different classes that's because they're using the same channel to play the same sound okay now let's go to the media player okay so inside of the media player what we have is we're going to first we're going to check if the bg playing is true so if the sound player is actually playing then what we want to do is we want to stop the sound player and then set the bg playing to false Right, so that way the sound are not overlapping each other and then after that we're just going to say mxp ctrl controls dot play so that way it's going to play the mp3 file that's loaded into the media media player and that's it so if i click start now okay so now if i play the sound player here so it's playing without the control being visible and if i click on the laser sound it's still playing because the background is playing in the, uh, uh, as well Okay, so this has been a quick tutorial on how to use the sound player and the media player together using Windows Form application. Hopefully you find this one useful in your uh, projects. Uh, the source code and the files will be available in the link in the description. And I will see you on the next one.